All right, guys, this is D and uh, and Anton Six. I usually you introduce, introduce yourself, but uh, <laughs> I'm D of FGN Nerd Talk, and I'm Anton Six of Cheesy Controller Podcast. And this is Table Cheese. I'm not editing any of this. This is going to be in the podcast. Cool, <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> we uh, we were just talking about Steam Deck, and as we usually do. I feel like. Between the two of us, Steam Deck is like... And I mean, in the gaming industry at large, it is... It's like the newest piece of hardware that is like reaching like broad adoption, so... Even like when I was on your show, Cheesy Controller, for your your 199 episode, you guys probably check out uh, where you have podcasts. I was talking with Jalen. Like, he was like a big proponent of it also. Like, he says he lays in bed with it and like just plays all his PC games that he has. And, you know... He's as, as hardcore of a gamer as you are. And I think to myself, like, if he's saying this, there's got to be other people out there saying the same thing. It's 400 bucks for, like, the low-end model of uh, the Steam Deck. You know, if you want to get a little bit higher, it's 600 bucks for, like, the, the higher end. It's all expandable storage. And, like, we were talking about the the, the God of War Ragnarok. I heard it's going to come out on on PC in January. Like, I could be wrong. That could be yeah. the thing. But uh, you were saying, like, like, that's a big turnaround. But, like... That's, That's a really be... so Sony they have invested in studios to port their games to PC. And okay. so God of War Ragnarok's coming out beginning of November. For it to be like any time in January would be the quickest turnaround for a PlayStation game coming from PlayStation to PC. And part of the reason I feel like they've been doing such a big gap between the actually the quickest turnaround so far will be Miles Miles Morales or Returnal depending on which I think we have a date for Miles Morales but that's a cross gen game so far we have not gotten any PS5 exclusive games come anywhere else so like the Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart the like different Returnal, even, well, I guess Deathloop came to PC day and date, but that wasn't a first party. Part of the PlayStation strategy with these PC releases of their first party titles is different than how Microsoft does it. Microsoft does it day and date, so you can play it wherever. Okay. Well, they're, they're, they are more of a PC proprietor brand, Microsoft. Right. They, 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 make, they make computers. But uh, I feel like, like what you're saying to me would, with PlayStation, if they got more of a wait and see kind of situation, like like let it make money on one platform before we give it off to the PC yeah. corporations. And I do have a date for the Miles Morales. It's uh, November eighteenth of That's this year. That's my mom's when... birthday. Look at that! See, there you go. Happy birthday, mom! There you go. Got, got her Miles Morales on the deck. <laughs> yeah, my, that entire sentence, my mom would just smile and nod. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom's the same way. Yeah, like video game. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, a Pokemon game came out on her birthday, and she at least understood the Pokemon part. But I was, <laughs> but wanted to play it. No, no, no. Right. No, thank you. <laughs> my mom would like get into certain games when, like, uh, my sister and I were a lot younger. We'd play like some random. Like, I can't even think of the names. Like, just random PC, like, free download kind of, like, almost Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, like, online level games. There were mm-hmm. some that my mom just would get really into. So Really? Yeah. Wow. My, my, my mom never got big into games like that. She was never big. Like, she was a... a a Miss Pac-Man player. That, that's her. That's her game of choice. Well, yeah, Ms. whatever. Pac-Man. It was like a match three type game that you just kind of clicked around on. That like, <laughs> my mom was the best player in the entire house of that game. <laughs> Don't doubt that, man. No doubt that. I um, I'm, play, I'm playing a game like that right now. I'm playing Merge Mansion. I know. I get it. I, I'm on a. I'm on a very. I'm on a very sophisticated gaming podcast, and I'm playing Merge Mansion. I know. That's why I need. Hey. <laughs> so okay let's roll it back and then we can get... so playstation strategy right now seems to be squeeze the games for all they're worth on playstation and then once they're done selling because they have like developers first and third party have said after your first like two months after launch especially with single player games that's where you're going to get 90% of your sales and then the rest of that game's lifetime will be 
ten percent, and that's just like off into the distance. Like you're getting your people who pre-ordered, you're getting your people who get that early good word of mouth, like off coming off good review scores, and so you're getting like that ninety percent of your audience in the first two months, and then after that, you're just kind of getting random people here and there like who randomly discover your game who are trying it somewhere else and so far PlayStation's strategy has been get our big games like almost all of the games that have come out except for Spider-Man Spider-Man's like the only exception to this has been free through PlayStation Plus in one way or another so Days mm. Gone Horizon God of War just all of their PC offerings have been games that they're like, okay, we got everything we could out of the PlayStation audience. People have gotten this game for free on PlayStation at this point. Let's charge 60 bucks for it on Steam. And then there are the people who will double dip because like, oh yeah, Spider-Man was a great game. Like, if I hadn't just gotten back into my Spider-Man save on Spider-Man Remastered on PS5 within the last couple of years... I'd definitely be down to play Spider-Man again on the Steam Deck. It's just... And so, that's why I think this turnaround's kind of fast. Especially with God of War being a cross-gen game. Because God of War Ragnarok is coming to PS4 and PS5. Like, it's not really being advertised for PS4. But the 100 million plus PS4s in the wild... That is... Even though Miles Morales as one of the cross-gen examples, sold more on PS5 than it did PS4. And Horizon Forbidden West, same deal. It's still going to be one of those things that if somebody buys God of War Ragnarok on PS4 and then gets a PS5 and a Steam Deck, it's a $10 upgrade to go to the PS5 version where you have to buy the entire game again and you can't carry your save currently. There are some rumblings about like a PlayStation PC kind of ecosystem thing where you could have trophies in your friends list because PlayStation's investing heavily into games as a service for the early part of this generation. Well, I guess we're kind of towards the end. This mid part of this new generation, PlayStation's definitely investing heavily into games as a service. And so those make sense to come out day and date because if you have a competitive multiplayer shooter, for example, making it, Let's say if you have PlayStation Plus, it's free on PlayStation Plus on PC and PlayStation. But you could also have that buzz and word of mouth and sell it to people on PC who would never subscribe to PlayStation Plus. Who would never and then kind of get them into that ecosystem and get them kind of acclimated with how things are done on the PlayStation side. Because it's different than Steam. Like it's not that different. Like they've become closer and closer as time has gone on but at the end of the day i did read some reviews some of them reviews said like it was a little choppy at times some reviews said like you know it was pretty seamless like uh it, like they all had like their pros and cons when it comes to people talking about playing the spider-man game on steam but i do think like 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 uh if we're comparing it to <clears throat> to just the spider-man game when it comes like the, the, the interactive games being transferred from from one company to the next there is like a list of games like uh Call of Duty made over 30 copies last year. Horizon Zero Dawn, there were 17 million copies. And Elder Ring, they like did up to 17 million copies. Like, you know, I, I do think like, like, like Spider Man selling over 33,000, 33 million copies, like it's making it a little bit more of an outlier to come out a little bit sooner and being transferred over. But uh, I do get what you're saying. Like, you know, having that happen, transferring those games over and uh, like from different places so it can make more money since it costs so much to put inside of it and since like it is such a money maker. You don't think it's it's gonna be this way for every game, though. I'm assuming, right? Like, well, it won't it won't be like that long six months transfer. Well, I mean, so like some of the examples you gave, Elden Ring launched everywhere all at once. Okay. So like, it's kind of a different conversation when you talk about multi platform games. That's that's true. That's like, true. Because yeah. Overwatch launched everywhere, full cross play, cross progression, and Overwatch Two has a higher. Uh, player count in the first few weeks than it had in the first few months on its initial release because it's free to play like there are a lot of factors that go into that and so so far the only comp well other than nintendo because nintendo will sell millions of units 
just on Nintendo hardware. They're very proprietary <laughs> sometimes too, yeah. But when you talk about something like Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk sold millions of copies, but Cyberpunk came out everywhere all everywhere at the same also. time. Yeah. So you kind of got to take like availability into account when you look at just the raw numbers of like what games have sold. And then you got to think about like this generation is really weird because it's been a while since we've had like just almost across the board backwards compatibility. Every, yeah. Almost every PS4 game plays on the PS5. Almost every Xbox One game plays on the Xbox Series X. Yeah. So it's kind of. All right. Yeah, okay. We're, we're we're getting into this. We're getting like into like the conversation I've been wanting to move us into for like for the past like uh since since you brought up the Steam Deck. Since like you you introduced like me to what a Steam Deck is, I've been wanting to move myself to this conversation with you. And that conversation is are are consoles gonna go the, on the wayside with this Steam Deck coming out? Do you think like we're not gonna see as many? No, I, don't know, I, I, I would I wouldn't say Nintendo, but like like PlayStation and Xbox. You know, like like people are gonna like be less interested in that considering that the Steam Deck is gonna be here. The PS Five and I don't see anybody getting a Steam Deck. Like I mean, now it's getting to the point where more and more people are getting access to it. But right. so far, the people that I know personally either have a new gen Xbox, a PS5, or both in some cases. Like everybody gotcha. that I know personally who's gotten a Steam Deck already has a current gen console. And the Steam Deck is just kind of an additive thing. It's kind of. It's appealing to a different audience, but the. I do see a lot of people comparing it to a Vita, if anything else, yeah. Yeah, and even with the Vita, like, a lot of people who had a Vita either had a PS3 or a PS4 as well. Like, it wasn't just you just had a Vita during that generation. Like, even now, the Switch is kind of a different ball game. It is. But the Switch... It doesn't offer you the same kind of games that you would get on the PC, and it has, like, its own kind of vibe to it. Well, yeah. it does. You'd be surprised at, like, because the barrier of entry has been lowered on all the major platforms, like, the amount of shovelware and third-party indies and, like, there's a lot of different things that you wouldn't expect to see on the Switch eShop. There's straight-up hentai games on the Switch eShop. So I've heard, yeah. So, like, the barrier of entry being lowered like that kind of like there are certain things you'd only get on PC, but a lot of those PC exclusive experiences are, I can't think of any games in like a lot of things I'm trying on my steam deck right now are like demos of like obscure, really obscure indie games that are just, but all the major things that I get... So let me just, like, bring up the games installed on my Steam Deck so I can give you, like, kind of a overview of what I use mine for. It's been it's been almost a month since you've had this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's hear the games you've been putting on there. So I have a Kane, which is, uh, like, a pixel art kind of, like, cyberpunky. It's, like, no matter what, your character is going to die by the end of the night. It's how many of the enemy are you going to take with you is like okay. the premise of the game. And it's really kind of like Hotline Miami, like one shot, one kill. Like you can kill them extremely easily. They can kill you extremely easily. It gets harder and harder and it has great visuals, great music. So there's that. There's this game, Anton, that I got just because it's called Anton. <laughs> it has a demo and it's coming out like June of next year. And so I know very little about the game. Like I haven't even gotten a chance to open the application, but that's there. Uh, there's a game called Anton Ball Deluxe, which I also am interested in because Anton is in the title of this game. Simply because. <laughs> is this, this, uh, this a Kane game? Is it more of a, like a 16-bit type game? Yeah. All so right, gotcha. uh, looking into it, Akane is, and the interesting thing, so Akane, Anton Ball Deluxe, and like, as I keep going, 
these games are Akane's available on PlayStation and Switch, as far as I know. And so, like, it's available to play in those places. Anton Ball Deluxe is also available on Switch. Uh, the next game, Bayonetta. Bayonetta 1 is available on PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS4, like, Switch. It's everywhere. It's on the Wii U. So, that shows just how ubiquitous of a game Bayonetta 1 is. Uh, Bleach Brave Souls. That's on mobile. Like, I'm currently, like, switching... Because that's cross progression uh, mm. between the mobile and PC version. So essentially, like, I started playing this game a while ago and I played it on my phone, but like, playing games on my phone isn't like always the stickiest experience. And just because it's Bleach, like, I'm really into it. But uh, playing it on my Steam Deck has been great because it's a touchscreen interface. I can just tap the screen and it doesn't go to sleep as quickly as my phone and I'm not getting notifications like I would on my phone. It's just like I get to run Bleach Brave Souls and so I've been doing Those are, that. Looks like a good time spender. Yeah. Yeah. Then I have Final Fantasy 1 through 7, good which God. 7 is available almost everywhere. One through six, it's a mixed bag on how you can get them. Like, this just seems to... <laughs> like, I'm hoping these pixel remasters that came out on mobile... Oh, all, so, one through seven, in essentially the forms that I have them in, are all available on mobile. But, uh... Is this is this inter is this integrate the remake that you're, no, you're talking about? just or regular okay. PS1 Final Fantasy seven. Good old fashioned regular degular. Gotcha. Right. And then I got Final Fantasy fourteen, which PC, you, PlayStation. You, you hold that one close to your heart. Yep. Oh, I got some <laughs> I got some on here recently that are really near and dear to me, and my Steam Deck usage has been going up and up and up. The more things I realize I can do with it, because <clears throat> Bleach Brave Souls says it's straight up not supported. And all it was is a matter of you have to like log in. And then, like, kind of, like, force close the browser and then, like, jump back to the game. It's just kind of, like, a little bit of initial setup that's, like, a little bit finicky to get it to work. But I, I've been reading about this. I've been saying, like, that a, a few games are like that when it comes to the Steam. Like, you got, like, you do certain little, uh, little, little tips and tricks to play certain games. Yeah. And so, and almost outside of, like, specific examples, like, I know Destiny 2... They're like, do not play Destiny 2 on your Steam Deck. You will get banned. So, wow. and that's like a official statement from Bungie. So, like, a lot of things like wow. that. But, yeah, so far. We, we, gotta, we gotta come back to that. That's interesting. <laughs> well, it's because of cheating. Because anti-cheat is built for when, like, a lot of these games that use the easy anti-cheat, anti-cheat, like, add-on to their software, it's not mm -hmm. compatible with Linux. And since you're, you'd be running it through a compatibility layer, it could introduce a lot of cheating, and it could, it could introduce a lot of problems to, like, the economy of the game. Like... Interesting. So, for that, like, for Destiny to be an ongoing live service, like people could data mine the files a lot easier and like a lot of ongoing games already have problems like this like people with the know-how to do it on linux will have a lot easier time doing it on linux than they would on pc so that's i, I gotta tell you like i'm really interested to see like how that's gonna play out in the future when it comes to this like since like you know steam deck is a linux base proprietary like i want to see like how that how that's gonna play out with the gaming world and that being so accessible in people's hands i just feel like it's gonna <clears throat> it's gonna be like a positive. I've been talking about the positive of Steam like for for like Steam like for a while now. But uh, I want to see like like really interested to see like how that negative is gonna play out because there's gonna be some negative with this thing pretty soon. And I mean, I'm sure that the good thing is for me, I can't really speak for anybody else. Like I'm not playing online games on this. I'm not playing mm. like competitive multiplayer stuff. I'm not. Even things like multiverses or I'm trying to look at what I even have installed on here that has multiplayer capabilities. Uh, Skullgirls or them fighting herds or stuff like that. This isn't where I'd play those games primarily. Okay. Like I have the ability to play them here and like there's 
ability to like practice and like having them here is nice. Like I'm keeping multiverses on here just so you can play it on my Steam Deck. Like I'm not playing multiverses on my Steam Deck. I just need you to play multiverses on my Steam Deck. I'm, I'm looking forward to Saturday. I can't wait. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. Uh, but there is a game on here that I wanted to talk to you about this week, and it's brand new. Came out publicly either today or yesterday, and it's the camera blur has completely ruined it. It's Marvel Snap. It's available on mobile and Steam, and Marvel Snap. It seems to be a really competent, like hearing people talk about it who are like more into gaming but are also big Marvel fans. Hearing them talk about it, like a lot of times, uh, what's that one? Uh, Marvel Strike Force. Like they're like, that's not really like the great thing. Marvel Snap seems to be three minute matches and it's the perfect one more match type of game. And it's just like. <laughs> That's cool. Hearing the amount of time that it's inadvertently stolen from people of like just like the quality foundation of the game being as solid as it is, it's something I definitely want to check out. So like I installed it on my Steam Deck. I added it before I left work. I added it to my library on Steam. Got home. It was right there front and center on my Steam Deck because it's the newest thing in my library. Hit install. It's like two gigs. So like five minutes later, I was... It's here. I haven't played it yet because we're doing this. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. I, I'm on. I'm on here right now. I'm on um <clears throat> on the Steam Deck, uh, Steam website currently. It says mostly positive reviews. Came out as you said the 18th. So that for the day this recorded, we recorded on the 19th. It came out yesterday. Uh, it's by Second Diner Studios, and it's a it's a car battle strategy yep. game. It's a casual PvP. By course with superheroes inside of it, it seems like it's really easy to play too. So yeah, it, it's just judging, and so like I know you have a iPhone, so mm-hmm. like I this might be one of the games that like we have we've yet to really be able to play anything together. Marvel know, Snap man. seems like you know I'm always looking for like I'm like <laughs> where is the D game? Where is the game that will push D over the edge? I, I never told you my favorite game, have I? Like, to, to take a break from, like, like the ongoing conversation that we're having. My favorite game, like, of, of all time, is Kingdom Hearts. It's the first Kingdom Hearts game. Oh, and, like, wow. my second favorite. That's a uh, weird choice. I know. I know, right? It's crazy. Uh, but before that, though, like, it was, like, Legend of Dragoon was also a favorite mm-hmm. game of mine. Uh, Valkyrie Profile was also a favorite game of mine. Um, oh, so I got to download the Valkyrie Elysium demo. I know, too, right? Okay. Oh my goodness, I saw that. I was like, oh my goodness, they got they got a Valkyrie Elysium game. That game was amazing, absolutely amazing. I was I was definitely thrown back when I saw that saw that preview, and uh, of course, God of War, like the, the the early God of War when it first came out, I was I was hooked, 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 hooked. I'm, looking I'm a simple at... gamer. I know Valkyrie Great. Elysium had a demo on PlayStation. Is that demo available on Steam? I'm looking for it. Looking, I know looking for it, now. it is. It is sixty bucks. It comes out November eleventh. Yeah, but I'm looking for just like the demo oh, because for a demo. Yeah, I know it has like a two hour long demo that's available on PlayStation, but I still haven't gotten Remote Play to work on here. Mm. So it just might not be available on PC. Hmm. I don't I don't see any demos currently. Um incorporate third party DMR. No, no, yeah. no, no demo that I see currently. But I do I do see like, like the release date. And it's in three weeks. And it does look gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it looks gorgeous. Huh. Go uh, it, looks, it looks just like the original. It looks just like profile. It looks just like Valkyrie profile. But like, you know, crisp. More crisp. Yeah, more modern. <laughs> yeah, more modern. There you go. <laughs> so, Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> I got to circle back to that. <laughs> have you played any of the other Kingdom Hearts games? I, I played two. I have not played three. Uh, I do have mixed reviews about three. I just have not gotten a chance. Like, a lot of console. I just haven't gotten a chance to get into it. But, okay. But uh, I, I haven't watched the game because I don't want to sell it for myself, you know? Okay. I wouldn't even say three is the best. Like, it seems to be the consensus of, like, the best. Because I, I've i played all the way through three. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I, that's the only one I've played the entirety of. Um, I've played bits of one and two, and then the myriad of spinoff games. It seems like people's favorites fall on either two or Birth by Sleep. Okay. I can, and res- so, I can definitely respect that. Yeah. Yeah. And it just seems like, what was it about two that just didn't capture you after one? Because it's like, it was like one chain of memories on the Game Boy is still like, I have a physical cartridge of that game because that is such a great <laughs> version of that game. Like, I don't uh, like the PS2 version, and that's, like, the only version you can play in these modern collections. But I got a GBA cart, and I got a DS Lite, and a Game Boy Advance SP that both work. So, if I need that quick hit of Chain of Memories, I can get it. Like, but Kingdom Hearts won. Like, I... Oof. It just doesn't hold up, man. Like, it they doesn't. they refined the series so much and stuck to, like... I feel like everything they did in that first game, they've done better somewhere else in this series. Yes. They have definitely, like, like changed their ways since. And, like, again, this is coming from a guy who has not played, like, the third game, but, like, you know, just from, like, the second game and even in the Nintendo's game, like you're talking about, the, the game definitely changed a lot with uh, after the first one. And even with all the new characters, new interfaces, like, the new uh, setup for, like, the character fighting and uh, the, the actual, like, uh, interaction of the game... They definitely changed themselves multiple times, and it doesn't even compare to the first game. It's like it's so crazy. But yeah, I just like I know a lot of people who who are huge Kingdom Hearts fans. It should be my thing. I just didn't have a PS2 <laughs> during the heyday of Kingdom Hearts being out. Like I was a GameCube kid at that time. So I was gonna say, like it sounds like like from from that that time you had to be playing GameCube. So like you yep. were on that. That Incredible Hulk game then, right? Oh, no. Uh, I I no? was on... Here's, like, I I was on Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. I okay. was on Sonic Riders, Sonic Heroes. I Respect. was on Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I was on... What are some other ones? Mm. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. <laughs> I remember that. Was so, it Beautiful Joe on the GameCube? Or am I thinking PlayStation? I have Beautiful Joe on my shelf. <laughs> well like, you did have like a, a cube like you didn't get a chance to play the splinter cell on the gamecube no that was uh, just judging by the games i was playing on gamecube and like thinking about where i, I was like in like third grade i, so, I can i can <laughs> i hear the game the game list like like mm, yeah so that's maybe a little little too intimidating for right me to it play sounds like game. an elementary <laughs> school kid <laughs> So, yeah, I wasn't playing, like, I think the most, like, mature game that I played was Shadow the Hedgehog on GameCube, okay. like, so. Okay. And I remember, and I like, that. That being... I love a long-lasting impression, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I remember uh, being afraid that my parents, like, every time you'd get hit, he'd say, damn. And then every time he'd die, he'd say, damn, not again. And I would be just, like, so worried. Like, I was like, this game's super fun and super cool. But, like, if my parents hear that, like, it is a wrap. Like, Shadow, shut the fuck up. <laughs> God, man. I mean, it had loud, Shadow the Hedgehog standing on the cover with a gun, and they bought it for me. Oh, so. yeah, he did. <laughs> like a little blaster. Yeah. Not a bla- a gun. <laughs> There's a difference between a blaster and, like, Star right, Wars me, and, me, it, and a gun. Let me, this let me is check like a out. Let me check this out. Nine millimeter <laughs> fucking. <laughs> it's a straight up a human gun. I'm looking this up. Oh no, you're right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a full on rifle. Okay. <laughs> Shadow, Shadow play no games. Got, got a mag ascending and everything. So, All right, Shadow. Yeah. That was like the most mature game I was playing on GameCube. Like I remember putting countless hours into Pokemon Channel, which is like this super small game that was supposed to just kind of be a promotion for like mm-hmm. people watching the Pokemon anime, but like I got every ounce of ju- uh, gaming juice out of that game. I don't, I don't think you're alone, my friend. I don't think you're. I think, I think uh, a lot of like the the Pokemon crowd who are still into Pokemon also played that very same game. So like you, you are not an outlier when it comes to that. But yeah, um, so that was my thing during the PS2 era. Like I got a PS2 later and bought with it like Kingdom Hearts one and two. 
and the PS2 version of Chain of Memories, Dirge of Cerberus, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I got, like, a lot of the heavy hitters. As far as, like, Japanese, like, third-person action adventure games, like, a lot of the heavy hitters in that genre. Like, as a high school kid, when I got my first PS2, I'm like, hell yeah, like, I've been seeing these games online, and they look great. I I I dabbled in the hacking of gaming also. I'm not gonna lie to you like that. The way you had to to rig a certain console to to play games for like like the Dragon Ball GT game or any other Japanese like exclusive games you had to play. Uh yeah, me and me and Lycos or Angel Fire or whatever like you know uh, website browser I was using to look up hacks or to find games. I was definitely getting myself very hardcore into that. I wasn't playing the games that the majority of, Amer- of American kids were playing back then. Well, well I remember looking uh, around the PS, the time I had the PS2 was when I was really like thinking about importing games, like looking at like Naruto yeah. games and yeah. stuff. Like that is a, like a soft spot I have with retro game consoles. Is those amazing? A lot of times like really high quality anime games. They just mm-hmm. never came out in North America because, like, never. like uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All Star Battle was PS3 Japan physical exclusive for a really long time. Like now, it's gotten a modern port and like is more accessible. It's, mm-hmm, it's out now. I think the R is out now. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, thinking about it, Naruto games like Naruto had a bunch of games that just never came stateside that on PS2 and GameCube that I would have loved to play. They're Bleach on PSP. Like I, around the era of the PSP, I there were because you could just download the package file from the web browser on the PSP to play any <laughs> and then, demo and then rip and then rip it, rip it to a disc. As an ESE file, and then you had to find like a, a a game that worked, switch it out, put it in like the actual game that you just burnt onto it, and like voila. Oh, on. well, go. that was way above the level I was functioning at. Oh, okay. there was a website <laughs> called PSP Demo Center that all you would do is you'd click download, and it just download the package file. What of the just the demos like. This website oh. focused entirely on demos, so like it wasn't piracy because it was content that was available for just free. It just wasn't free. for the PlayStation Store, like the North American PlayStation Store. It was I was getting things like I remember God Eater. I want to say was one of the big ones that had a demo in Japan, and I downloaded God Eater and I had no idea what was going on. But, like, I still... The Bleach Heat the Soul games and the Bleach Soul Carnival games. I remember figuring out my way through the menus to get into playing the game. And playing every single one of those games that had a demo, I played the shit out of all of those demos. And and for legal reasons, also, I have never done any of those things I was just talking about in the full detail. (laughs) Just to let you guys know. Well, (laughs) I mean, now I'm in a situation where a few years ago, I was working a job that, like, I was able to, and this is pre-pandemic, I was able to, and I talked about this on Cheesy Controller, as far as emulation, like, I've amassed a collection of games, and so... Most of the times when I want to emulate a game or play... Because the Steam Deck's great for emulation. I just don't have enough storage to do what I really need to do with it. So I'm, like, holding gotcha. off on it until, like, I have, like, a bigger micro SD card and I can throw a lot more stuff on there. But mm-hmm. I bought all those Japanese PSP games that I was playing the demos for. The Cut to Kill Hitman Reborn game, like... The U.S. doesn't know about Cut to Kill Hitman Reborn in the way that, like, Japan knew about Cut to Kill Hitman Reborn. And so, that had two PSP games. And so, like, I went on a eBay buying spree. I bought all the Bleach PSP games, all the, uh, like, Japanese exclusive, like, Final Fantasy Type-0 never came out in North America on PSP. And that's the only... PSP game that I know of that's two discs. It's actually two UMDs in the case for Final Fantasy Type-0. So, like, all of these 
especially PSP era games that I would even have like a passing interest in emulating, I have physically. So in my opinion, that kind of removes like a lot of the, because technically it's not illegal to emulate games that you own so like i have ds games i have gba games i have nes games i have japanese super famicom games i have japanese nintendo 64 games like there are a lot of these games that it's like there's no good way to play them in the Not modern true. day so but i would want to emulate them for my specific purposes and so i spent the money to get the physical like it's not, and it's not just like I'm buying a bunch PSP cases in bulk and printing labels and putting them. <laughs> no, like I bought some dude in Japan was selling his Bleach Soul Carnival one and two for like ten bucks, and I sent that dude ten bucks, and he sent me those two games. So now I can emulate them free and clear. There you go. And it, it, back in my my youth, there was there was a few nerd stores out here like they just that just had like Japanese themed accessories and like in product so they would sell import games or order them for you like back when i was in my heyday of buying certain games like it seems like you had like a more of a accessory to the internet to get you things like that yeah i mean a lot a lot more of this has been becoming an adult and realizing just like because there are games that I have that have tripled in value since pande- like the pandemic hit. A lot of people were bored indoors with nothing to do and started collecting things. Like that's what has happened with Pokemon cards. That's what happened with all types of things like manga. Yeah. Just, but I always have the foresight of like, and I mean, I wasn't expecting the prices of these games to go up. I bought these games to be able to either emulate them or just straight up in certain cases play them that I just didn't have access to at the time. And so, yeah, for me as an adult with eBay and a debit card, like (laughs) you, you were going at it, man. You were going at it. Looking back, I got like some imported Vita games. I got some, I got some, pretty cool i have a game that i don't even know where i got this game it's a psv game called fired up and apparently was never released in north america and i don't know how this game got into my collection because i've never i don't remember purchasing a game called fired up on the psv but i have it and i remember like in high school trying to trade it into gamestop and then being like this doesn't exist in our system It it looks like Twisted Metal, in a way. Yeah, I mean... Man, spinning up a UMD, I wish there were a thing that wasn't portable that could play UMDs. I I wish there... I haven't heard that word in a while. I'm sorry. You <laughs> yeah, the, the Universal <laughs> Media Disc? Wow. <laughs> that really takes you back, man. <laughs> the Ooh. mini discs of the GameCube? Like, stuff like this is just like always awesome to me like there's one piece of hardware that's out there that i really want that just keeps going up in price and i should have got it when nobody wanted it and they were selling it for cheap it's the ouya i know the ouya is oh yeah (laughs) i've heard of it yeah yeah the ouya had a lot of big promises but a lot of people understood that it was going to fail and for me like there were a lot of good ideas going into it they just they're not Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft, or even Google, or even, like, it was a Kickstarter, and they made a lot of good decisions, and a lot of the best games from that have come other places, like, somebody's listening to us, because in my <laughs> Discord, somebody just posts Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on Steam Deck, online play in HD texture pack, that is the most recent... That is the most recent PSP. I turned this damn blur off. (laughs) The blur is killing him. (laughs) Change background. I know. know, There it is. (laughs) But 
that's three ultimate. I have portable third, which is the one that I'm way more interested in playing. Like the introduction is an ogre, the feudal Japanese like art style. They hadn't really gone back to like a Japanese theme until Monster Hunter Rise. So for a long time, this bad boy right here. <laughs> That's cool to get like like a little little decks of all your games. You know exactly where they are. That's that's a sign yeah. of a true loyalist right there, man. I, I mean, like now it. that you can see it, like they're organized by like system and kind of era. So like up you top, could... I got PS4 and Vita, and then okay. coming down some, I got my steel books because I don't have that many steel books. But that collection's growing. I have like some special editions over here. I got my Xbox One games. I can see that. I got PS2 next to it. Coming around, I got Xbox 360. Got it. I got Switch. That's what the red is. Gotcha. Yeah. PSP over there. That, you can see the little dab at the very top. Like, you know, that's PSP for sure. Yeah, I got DS. And and I'm, this is not playing for audio listeners. I'm sorry. Check out the video version. Give D that extra click. <laughs> Show Table Cheese some love. Is that, is that, is that Dreamcast? Uh... I don't have any Dreamcast games. Like I don't have no? any. I don't have any Sega consoles or games. Whoa! Like I, because growing up it was always like Nintendo, PlayStation, PlayStation Xbox, Nintendo, yeah. PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and I mean even so, yeah. Yeah. I got DS and 3DS over there. I'm trying to like not, and then I got GameCube and Wii and Wii U, and then over here is PS3. And then down there, uh, that's a mix between CDs and PS1 games, because they're all in the same jewel case. Uh, I got some more special editions down there. And then I got my Blu-ray collection over there. And then those bottom two shelves are like DVDs. I was I was gonna say miscellaneous, but yeah, the DVDs work too. I dig it. That's a wow, man. You gotta really throw me back. All my all my stuff uh, was in a storage. And uh, it was all taken from me. So all my stuff is gone now. So all my all my games, all my consoles. I had every console, like any console, any any like major console you can think of, except for Dreamcast. I had them. All my comics gone. But yeah, <clears throat> that's a sad story for a different episode. But yeah, it's uh, I feel I, for you, it, man. Like it, uh, it, that it is one of my because. There are some things I remember in elementary school, middle school, high school. I remember getting into college and being like, I'm never trading in a game again because Mm -hmm. there were so many great games. And it's like things I'm just kind of selling to get the next thing. And it's like GameStop had a had multiple generations of this loop of like buy four sixty dollar games, trade them in for like five dollars each, and then get like a twenty dollar game and like stay on that kind of treadmill for a really long time. And like yeah, the amount like. of thing like the amount of just games. I had a copy of Kirby Air Ride. Do you know how much a f- copy of Kirby Air Ride is in twenty twenty two? Go look just go look for a complete inbox copy of Kirby Air Ride. And tell me if you'd be willing to pay it. Just like sight unseen. <laughs> oh, almost two grand! Holy hell! Well, that must be a sealed copy. I know, but I, I know it's a couple hundred for just like complete in blo- box, but not sealed. So complete in box. I don't know if how into game collecting you've ever been. Complete in box or CIB is the disc, the manual, the slip in the outside, and if it came with anything extra like. Some games come with maps. Like, I know GameCube games, like, certain GameCube games, like, Animal Crossing came with, like, a memory card and stuff like that. Like, whatever, if you bought the game brand new and opened it, whatever was in that box that day is still in that box. And, like, a lot of my retro collection are complete in box. Like, I'll spend the extra money because I'm sure I could get a loose disc of Kirby Air Ride for GameCube for probably like 20 30 bucks but okay. I'd rather have a complete in box copy of that and actually like add it to the shelf make it look pretty neat and presentable you, you never get you never get a price like what 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 is like the highest price you've seen for something like that Kirby Air Ride 2 to 300 dollars for a complete in box copy wow wow that really all right 
Um, I I never got into like you know doing it myself, collecting the games, and like it seemed like like raising the price or like trading like that. Well, trading that's a whole different thing. But uh, I I did like like take a look and see like you know people taking interest in buying old games. But usually I never saw many games that were in box. Never saw games that like that had like the manual, had the original box. In the game inside of it all at all at the same time. Well, looking at it, it looks like the market got a little bit flooded with Kirby Air Ride copies. It's going oh. for like set sixty to seventy dollars. Mm-hmm. I see some for thirty. Yeah. Well, those thirty. So this is another thing with game collecting. All of those. You see that yellow player's choice banner at the top of the case okay. on all yeah. the cheap ones. And the bestseller badge, those, those are, are technically, right? yeah, those are like, they're uh, later prints. Fans, they re- reprints. Yeah. yeah. So you always like, and that's something, it's not something I'm super die hard about because I have a couple PS3 games that are like the greatest hits, but like on PlayStation, the black label, it's way more it valuable nice. when it's. Yeah. So, like, I got a black want, label copy it, so of sure. Final Fantasy VII on PS1. <clears throat> I just lucked up because w- somebody wrote in, like, Sharpie. Let me see if I'll get it. Unless someone's signing it, you don't want anyone writing anything in Sharpie. Like, it looks like it's uh, one of the creators or developers. You don't want anyone signing one of your games. Yeah, yeah, but from the front and the side, you can't tell that somebody wrote. And, I mean, like, it's literally over the barcode. Oh, in wow. the back. And so I was able to get a complete inbox. All the discs are here. The manuals are here. Everything is here. Like, of Final oh. Fantasy VII, black label, com- like, complete inbox, just because it had some Sharpie on it. I'll take Bro, this Sharpie. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Have you ever, like, uh, the, the change subject, once again, have you ever bought yourself, like, a game today and just sat on it? Like, not open it, just kept it on your shelf and, like, and not done stuff with it? Have I have that? Switch and PS4 games that are just sealed because I got them. And I, let me see. This, right here, very on brand. This is a sealed copy of Monster Hunter Rise, the deluxe <laughs> edition is. on Nintendo Switch. I knew it was going to be Monster Hunter. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. And like, dude, like you do this because like you're you're a fan too. You don't do this because like you want to get any kind of like like monetary prize from this. You do this because like like because you're just a fan of a collection. Yeah, no, the, like uh, that's the thing. There's the two things. There's a difference between hoarding and collecting. That difference mm-hmm. is organization. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one of my core tenets. I like it. I like it. It's like, I'm not a hoarder. I'm a collector because I organize this shit. <laughs> it looks nice. I'm not going to lie to you, man. You got a, got a nice side. I know you said like your, decks, your desk is kind of like the same way too. A lot of not like, you know, organization and... Uh, well, my desk is a bit too. more chaotic because... Like, I just, Xbox controller, multiple <laughs> PS5 controllers, just like, that, the problem is, <laughs> the problem with my desk is there are too many, like, I'll be doing something and like, I like to, like, my Xbox controller is to my PC, so if I want to play something on my PC, that needs to be within arm's reach. My Switch controller, sitting there. My PS5 primary controller, if my wife wants to play something on PS5. I got mm. another controller sitting here for her, but like my so, dad. So wait, dude, this this is like where we're at right now, and uh, I I don't mean like like to, to talk about like your plays like in like this way, but uh, I I see it there. Is that a monitor for your consoles to like to the left of you? This yeah. is. I need to get Madrid this monitor. Madrid has been living the one monitor life for entirely too long. <laughs> and this used to be my secondary monitor. I upgraded. I have a secondary monitor now that is a lot closer to my primary monitor. They're the same size, same manufacturer. Like, my desk setup looks a lot better. And this one has built-in speakers. So when I'm watching YouTube while playing something on my primary monitor, I can listen to, like, music, do whatever, which this doesn't have built-in speakers. This, though, has been used a few times for, like, things like my Steam Link. 
and it's it's kind of like the it has a HDMI port so I can test things on it but it's not gotcha. like and then the problem also with it is I had this really cool idea of having like b-roll or something like that during like if we're doing a background. podcast like having stuff like that. that going in the background it doesn't show that. up well on camera it's a whole mm. thing but yeah well hey man i know like your, your 200 episode for cheesy controllers coming up soon mm-hmm. you're still trying to box wrap it up for him see what he says it might be a uh, good good footage for yourself <laughs> well, well the thing is i want i know madrid probably doesn't have the desk space for it right now so i don't want it to go and then sit in a corner or something like i'll it'll be here i'll take good care of it <laughs> put my little kind of funny hat on it there you go there you go <laughs> Uh, I wish I had more topics to talk about because this has been a very fun episode to chat with you. We just we just went on the seat of our pants. Uh, the reason why you guys are getting this episode, it, for you listening to it, it's going to be like nothing has passed. But for us, we are recording this episode like, what, four days late? Because uh, I was dog sick. Yeah, on, and I mean... And, and my kid's birthday was like was happening the same day too. So I had to take like three shots at the, at the kid casino. That's what we call uh, main event. With the arcade, it's, dude, like it's a kid casino, like whatever you want to say. Like it's hey. you hear all the, all the loud noises that the kids run around playing games. They I spent mean, my twenty second but... birthday at main event. See, you get it, you get it, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was bowling. It was the nice. laser tag in there is legit. <laughs> my 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 uh, six year old, he really wanted to do laser tag. We didn't have time to do laser tag, but we did do bowling. We did bowling. Did one round of bowling. We got to. uh Play just about every single game that was inside there. They love to claw. Uh, kids, kids today still love to claw, man. They still love it. Still crazy for it. But it was fun. The UFO crane game. I have always been terrible, <laughs> though. We all are, man. <laughs> but, like, that's the thing. In the advent of the internet, you see people who is just like, I'm going to go in here and get every toy out of this thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't get one with the same amount of money that you just put into it. He's hacking. He's just a hack. <laughs> it's just some skill to it. And I, I that so. is like, I'm a gamer in a lot of ways. Oh, the one thing before we go yeah. that I got running on my Steam Deck that has been amazing. And it wasn't, it's deck verified, but it was just on sale. And I had some Steam wallet credit. Tetris Effect Connected. Oh, you mentioned that last time that you were going to play some Tetris. Yeah. Well, yeah. I It's one of my comfort games, and it just happened to uh, really... So every time Ooh. I play Tetris Effect on a new console, I don't go into marathon mode. I don't go like off and do like my stuff. I play through the campaign of Tetris Effect Connected. Cause it's, do you like, really? Yeah. And so wow. I did it on PlayStation. Did it on Xbox. Did it on the Epic Game Store version. Uh, now I'm doing it on the Steam Deck version, and it's been great. Like I was actually in a PSN party, and this shows how broken I am in a certain way. I have my <laughs> PS5 on with my headset on, talking to people <clears throat> playing Overwatch on PlayStation, and they're like, "What's that music coming from your end, Anton?" I'm like, "I'm playing Game of the Generation Tetris Effect Connected." <laughs> And yeah, I, I I'm looking at like the the trailer for this on Steam currently. It says uh, it has very very positive uh, recent reviews and overall reviews overwhelmingly positive. This yeah, is like this a game game's year so best soundtrack. This is nuts, man. Yeah, it's uh, Tetris Effect. The only thing that the Steam Deck version doesn't do that I would say if you've played Tetris Effect and you haven't played it in VR. VR Tetris Effect is a religious experience. It will blow your fucking mind. Like, that's the thing. Like, I've done a lot of things in VR. I've played a lot of games in VR. Like, I've gone through... Over the course of time, I've had two different PSVR headsets. I have an Oculus Rift S over here. Like, VR is really cool, and there are a lot of really interesting things you can do in VR. But I will sit my ass down in this chair right here, and I will play Tetris Effect Connected in VR. Because it is... (laughs) <laughs> it's it's one of the most special things in gaming. It looks gorgeous. It does. Like I, I see like the gameplay. It looks it looks absolutely gorgeous. Like wow. Like some minority report, like gorgeousness. This is how good this looks. Like you could be on the moon. Yeah. And play and playing Tetris is wow. Like 
And and multiplayer? I don't think the multiplayer supports VR because that's for me been one thing. Like, because Tetris Effect connected is what added multiplayer. When it was just nice. Tetris Effect, it had it was just single player, had the campaign, but then it had marathon mode and all those different like things you expect out of a Tetris game. But the multiplayer Tetris game at the time was either Puyo Puyo Tetris 1 or Tetris 99 on the Switch. Both of which are really good. But now, where you're like, time has passed on, Tetris Effect Connected and Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 are kind of the gold standard with like Tetris games right now. So, just, I know we talked about it on the last episode. Uh, that that plus like the world finals for Tetris happened recently. I didn't watch any of it. Mm. I was just seeing tweets about it. And because that happened, the game was on sale and I had to use my steam credit on it. <laughs> I mean, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, man. It's the game of the year. You got to pick it up. Game of the generation. Get it right. D. Game of the generation. <laughs> I know I have like three games of the generation for last generation, but it's Tetris effect. Monster Hunter World and Final Fantasy XIV. Those are the three yeah. games that I'd say. Like, I played hundreds of games last generation. Those three hey, man, stand above. You live up to it. You live up to it. Like, you, you, you talk about them constantly, always positive things. You recommend it to everyone. So, yeah, no, I, I hear you. You hold by These it. are the kind of games that will enhance your life. I'm just trying to help you live a better <laughs> gaming life because these games have helped me live a better gaming life. I'm just... You know, sharing the love, like. <laughs> and on that note, we are we are definitely gonna sign off. Anton is giving you, he's giving you like the gospel, the gospel of gaming, and like he's got a table cheese here first. Make sure you make sure you check out those games. Uh, this has been fun. This has really been like a really good fun episode. So uh, as always, I'm grateful for the ear and the knowledge that you you dispose uh, bestow upon us. Uh, I am D of FTN Nerd Talk. Make sure you check out anything FTN Nerd Talk wherever you find FTN Nerd Talk. Uh, cheesy Controller Podcast around the uh, cheesycontrollerpodcast dot com to find <laughs> us around the internet. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at Anton Six with three X's. Instagram is Anton Six with the number six with two X's because the first X is implied, like. It, it's a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, tweet at me, Instagram me. I've seen people come from like your timeline and like who follow you. Like somebody will follow me and it's like the only person that they follow that's like in my network is UD. So like, thanks for like having I some I got of you, those. man. Yeah. And hopefully people have come to you from che- like your couple appearances now on Cheesy Controller Podcast because like I'm, I'm noticing new faces on my Twitter timeline so like definitely like some folks are gathering over there I haven't done the investigative reporting to find out who is and isn't joining from there but like definitely I got some new faces coming over and I got like I had to tell myself it has to be from this guy it has to be and if you guys listening to this like the day that we dropped this 200th episode coming out soon yep. Cheesy Controller uh, like you guys are doing it big congratulations yep live from Radic Records we're going to be streaming over on twitch.tv slash Cheesy Controller if you miss it live there we'll drop the podcast version and the video version on our YouTube channel so like nice. just keep an eye out for it episode 199 is out and about around the internet featuring D uh, episode 200 yeah that was really fun thanks for that alright until next time you guys uh, you guys take it easy And keep it cheesy.